Hello, this is John from Cave of Programming, and this is another video in my JavaScript and Node.js for Beginners uh, tutorial. And in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about the history of JavaScript. So um, I looked up uh, when JavaScript was actually devised and created, and apparently it was about 1995. Uh, so I started... As far as I remember, I think the first web page that I actually created would have been 1997. Um, and I started looking at uh, VB script at the time and JavaScript pretty soon after that. So I think I started using JavaScript fairly soon after it was after it actually came out. Now, um, in the last video, we looked at this identity test operator and I don't remember that identity test operator being there in the early days of JavaScript. I couldn't actually find out about the history of it uh, in the 10 minutes to 5-10 minutes I spent searching. I didn't manage to find out when it was added to JavaScript um, but um, I don't remember it being there. If it was there I don't think many of us used it that's for sure but I think it was added to JavaScript quite um, late on. Now JavaScript when it first came out was a scripting language that was intended to add a little bit of functionality to web pages. So you'd write a web page in HTML, a kind of tag-based language that we'll look at a little bit later, later on in this course. And that represents, you know, how your web page looks. And then in the early days, sometimes you wanted to do, you wanted to add just a little bit of functionality to your website. And typically, you'd be either creating an image rollover which were popular in the past, and that's where you moved your mouse over an image and it changed when your mouse moved over it. Or you'd be adding some validation to a web form, so you'd have a form people could enter information in, and you wanted to um, make sure that they, um, that they could only enter uh, you know, information that was appropriate, like that they didn't type, um, they didn't type letters into a telephone number field or whatever. And of course, that, that's not ironclad validation a hacker could get around it but it was help it was it was and is helpful for the average web user so javascript was at first used for that sort of thing and typically nothing much more complicated than that so um uh it you know it, it would have been strange under the circumstances for if javascript continually forced you to convert one thing into another like the value that you get back from a form in a uh, on a web page that's is that coming back as text or as a number probably text and then you, if you want to compare it to a number you don't want to have to convert it so the equals equals operator was implemented generally to be extremely flexible in javascript but what what's happened i think is that um as javascript has moved towards being a general purpose programming language uh, then this equals equals operator, equality test operator, has just been felt to be too flexible, too helpful. And we, we have this stricter uh, identity test operator um, has been added to JavaScript. And in fact, um, I think it, some people say that the equals equals operator is now the evil twin of the equals 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 operator. So they say that you shouldn't use it um, unless you really absolutely need it. And I, I concur with that, really. I think um, now use the, uh, the identity test operator with three equal signs wherever possible and generally avoid using the equals equals or the, for that matter, the not equal. Prefer the, the version with more equal signs because it's a stricter test and it doesn't do unnecessary um, conver conversions. And these conversions, you might... Um, sometimes find them find it a bit hard to even predict what they're going to do. You know, it's it's letting the language get out of your control a little bit. It's better to use something stricter so that you're sure of what's actually going on wherever possible. Now, the path from um, a uh, sort of lightweight, silly little programming language used in browsers to a general powerful programming language has been a long and hard one for JavaScript. The problem was that in the early days, um, every browser had its had a different implementation of JavaScript. And in fact, things that worked in one browser didn't always work in another. And that is 
still a little bit of a problem, but much less of a problem than it was in the uh, in the early days. And often now we're not even writing JavaScript in a browser. You know, here I'm starting off this course. I'm we're doing it on the command line to start with. Um, but that was an obstacle to improving JavaScript because if someone, let's say uh, the people who are in charge of Internet Explorer, if, which was for a while a very popular web browser, if they added some new innovation in JavaScript to their browser, the people who were in charge of the Netscape browser or whatever, um, they you know they didn't necessarily add the same thing you know so it was just a mess, and what was um, what, well, one early attempt to kind of paper over the cracks was people created, uh, they created sort of JavaScript APIs or libraries like jQuery, which give you a sort of common interface that papers over the cracks. So you use jQuery, it's still very useful today and it, it can do much more than just papering over cracks. But one thing it does is it gives you a kind of standard interface that works the same on all browsers you know, you work with jQuery and it kind of um, works with JavaScript behind the behind the scenes. It is just an addition to JavaScript, but it makes JavaScript a bit more seamless. And there are also things like CoffeeScript that sort of compile to JavaScript um, and, again, give you a sort of uniform way of dealing with JavaScript. But what was really needed was a, um, a kind of universal language standard for JavaScript and that developed in the form of this thing, ECMAScript. ECMA stands for uh, something like, what does it stand for actually? Let's take a look. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing here, ECMA. Take a look here. ECMA stands for, it's not going to tell me, is it? Computer manufacturer something computer manufacturer all right let's just type this into google what does ecma stand for europe i thought it was european but i didn't like to say um because i was thinking european really usually this stuff comes out of the states okay but european computer manufacturers association incredibly uh so this um this ECMAScript is uh, a standard for JavaScript, essentially. It's not a language in itself. It's a standard for a language. And we can see, okay, the fourth edition was abandoned, but the fifth edition uh, came out at some point, and um, that kind of took. And then, you know, we see major progress around, you know, sort of like 2011, 2015, and so on. You can see that, yeah, add strict mode in 2009. So anyway, um, uh, now th this has kind of changed the dynamic that's going on here because now people who implement JavaScript in a browser sort of are going to have to pay attention to this ECMAScript standard and hopefully they'll all implement the same thing. So it's a big step forward to creating a unified, coherent sense of what JavaScript is that will be supported by all major implementations. And I, I guess it probably helps as well that at the moment the Chrome browser is dominating the scene. So what Chrome does, other browsers are going to have to play catch up with. So now we've got this unified standard for JavaScript and a part of it um, added, I think, in a maybe 2011, but I'm, I'm not sure, don't take my word on that, is this equals 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 operator that helps make it a more strict sort of um, a language. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about this a bit uh, in case you wonder why three equal signs just to check equality. Uh, and also, um, it's important to know about this ECMAScript standard. A single equal sign is used to assign values, of course. Equals equals two equal signs that was used to check equality, but that was felt unsatisfactory. And now in this ECMAScript standard, we have this identity test operate with three equal signs. Hopefully there's not going to be one with four equal signs. That would just be too much. All right, so um, that's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.